Moving on to the right ventricle, looking at its position, the right ventricle is a triangular chamber which receives blood from the right atrium and pumps it to the lungs through the pulmonary trunk and the pulmonary arteries. The right ventricle forms the inferior border and a two-thirds part of the sternocostal surface and one-third part of the inferior surface of the heart. Now let's look at the external features of the right ventricle. Externally, the right ventricle has two surfaces, the anterior or the sternocostal surface and the inferior or the diaphragmatic surface. Interiorly, it has two parts, an inflowing part and an outflowing part. The inflowing part is rough due to the presence of muscular ridges called trabeculae carniae. Now the outflowing part that is the infundibulum is smooth and forms the upper conical part of the right ventricle which gives rise to the pulmonary trunk right here. The two parts are separated by a muscular ridge called the supraventricular crest situated between the tricuspid valve and the pulmonary orifice. To give you a more clear picture of what we learnt right now, here is the right ventricle and here is the trabeculae carnea that you can see right here. This is the pulmonary trunk and here is the supraventricular crest that is a muscular ridge that separates the inflowing and the outflowing part of the right ventricle. It is situated between the tricuspid opening and the pulmonary orifice. Concising the important points under the right ventricle, the right ventricle is a triangular chamber which receives blood from the right atrium and pumps it to the lungs through the pulmonary trunk and pulmonary arteries. It forms the inferior border and a two-thirds part of the sternocostal surface and one-third part of the inferior surface of the heart. Looking at the external features, externally right ventricle has two surfaces, the anterior or sternocostal surface and inferior or diaphragmatic surface. The interior of the right ventricle has two parts, the inflowing part and the outflowing part. The inflowing part is rough due to the presence of muscular ridges called trabeculae carnea. The outflowing part, the infundibulum is smooth and forms the upper conical part of the right ventricle, gives rise to the pulmonary trunk. The two parts, that is the inflowing part and the outflowing part, are separated by a muscular ridge called the supraventricular crest, situated between the tricuspid and the pulmonary orifices. Now let's move on to the internal features of the right ventricle. The interior shows two orifices. First is the right atrioventricular orifice or the tricuspid orifice guarded by the tricuspid valve or the right atrioventricular valve that you see right here, the pulmonary orifice that is guarded by the pulmonary valve that you see right here. The interior of the inflowing part shows trabeculae carnea or muscular ridges of three types, ridges, bridges and pillars or papillary muscles. Looking at it more clearly in this diagram, the interior of the inflowing part shows trabeculae carnea or muscular ridges of three types that is ridges, bridges and pillars or papillary muscles. Here you can see the papillary muscles. Now the pillars or papillary muscles have one end attached to the ventricular wall and the other end is attached to the cusps of the tricuspid valve. This is the tricuspid valve that is three cusps, tri is three, three cusps. So, one end of the papillary muscle is attached to the ventricular wall and the other end is attached to the cusps by chordae tendine. These are chordae tendine or the tendinous cords. Now, there are three papillary muscles in the right ventricle. They are the anterior, the posterior and the septal. The anterior papillary muscle is the largest. The posterior or inferior papillary muscle is small and irregular and the septal papillary muscle is divided into a number of little nipples. Now the septomarginal trabeculae or the moderator band is a muscular ridge extending from the ventricular septum to the base of the anterior papillary muscle right here. It contains the right branch of the AV bundle. 
the wall of the right ventricle is thinner than that of the left ventricle in a ratio of 1 is to 3. Looking at the interventricular septum, it is placed obliquely. One surface faces forwards and to the right and the other faces backwards and to the left. The upper part is thin and membranous while the lower part is thick and separates the two ventricles. Here is the interventricular septum between the two ventricles in this diagram right here. Looking at the internal features, the interior shows two orifices, the right atrioventricular or tricuspid orifice guarded by the tricuspid valve, the pulmonary orifice guarded by the pulmonary valve. The interior of the inflowing part shows trabeculae carnea or muscular ridges of three types that is ridges, bridges and pillars or papillary muscles. Papillary muscles are of three types, anterior, posterior and the septal papillary muscles connected to the cusps by chordae tendineae. The interventricular septum. It is placed obliquely, one surface faces forwards and to the right and the other surface faces backwards and to the left. The upper part is thin and membranous while the lower part is thick, muscular and separates the two ventricles.